Good morning, students. Welcome to online history classes. Today's topic is Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Under him, we will be doing his early life and travels. As discussed uh, before, uh, the university questions on this topic is mostly of two types. One, they may ask you on his early life and travels. Number two, on his martyrdom. Uh, now, if you just see the 10 years paper, the question on the martyrdom has been frequently asked, but there have also been times, there have also been years when his early life and travels has also been asked. So we will be talk, taking into account this question today. Now, before we move on, this is the picture of the ninth Guru, Shri Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, who earned the title Hind Ki Chadar. Some interesting facts on Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji was an expert in archery, swordmanship, horsemanship and old classics. While in Baba Bakala, Guru Ji spent nearly 26 years, 9 months and 3 days in meditation. He composed 115 poetic hymns. His works include 116 Shabads, 15 Ragas and his Bhagats are credited with 782 compositions that are part of Bani in Sikhism. Patiala, Lehel, one of the largest cities of Punjab, was founded by Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. Now his early life. Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji was born on the 1st April 1621 AD at Amritsar. He was the fifth and the youngest son of Guru Hargobind Ji. His childhood name was Tyagmal and it was during the Battle of Kartarpur when the name of Tegh Bahadur was given to him by his own father, Guru Har Gopinji. He was married to Mata Gujri, daughter of Lal Chand. Guru along with his family came to settle at Bapa Bakala, a small township near Amritsar. Now, assumption of Guruship. In 1664, before breathing his last, Guru Har Krishan Ji gave a hint to Sikh Sangat that the next Guru will be in Baba Bakala. But actually, the person who is given the credit to find the Guru is Makhan Shah Lobana. Now, who is Makhan Shah? He was actually a trader. Once, when his ship was caught in a sea storm and was about to sink, he prayed faithfully that if his ship ship reached the shore safely, he would offer 500 gold mohar at the Guru's feet. With the grace of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, the ship was saved from being sunk. In order to keep his word, he along with his family came to Baba Bakala to offer 500 mohar at Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji's feet. He was surprised, bewildered to see 22 imposter gurus. He conceived of an idea to find out the real Guru. One by one, he went to each guru and offered two mohar. The imposter gurus were delighted to receive two mohar. When Makhan Shah finally reached Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji and offered him two mohar, Guruji said, You promised to offer 500 mohar when your ship was about to sink, but now you are offering only two mohar. Why are you backing out now? On hearing this, Makhan Shah felt very glad and shouted loudly from the roof of the house, Guru Ladhore, Guru Ladhore, which meant Guru has been found, Guru has been found. In this way, Sikh accepted Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji as their ninth Guru and he held his Guruship from 1664 to 1665. Although Guruship was not very easy for him because he had to meet with the opposition of Dhirmal, the elder brother of Guru Har Rai. Dhirmal conspired with the Masand to kill Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. In this assault, Guru's shoulder was also hit with a bullet. He was wounded, but he remained serene and calm. Later, Dhirmal was attacked by the Sikh. However, Guru forgave him. So, now the question that we are doing is the early life and the travels of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. So, we have answered Part A of the question, which is his early life. Now, moving forward, we will talk about his major travels. Now, while I was researching this program, uh, this uh, question, I actually, um, I actually read divergent uh, books on this and I also found divergent views on this, these travels. 
So while I was making this slide, I actually felt that because the students may not get confused with the name of these areas, so I picked up the same areas which have been mentioned in their books, but little details have been altered to make the answer more impressive. Another thing, I have also linked at the end of the video uh, the link of a book which has been uh, which is a part of Punjabi University publication. And this book is exclusively on the travels of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji and Guru Gobind Singh Ji. So when you talk about the travels, uh, they are again two things. One, the areas. Now the areas we can see from here, uh, he traveled from the Maja areas to Amritsar, to Kiratpur Sahib. Then he founded Anandpur Sahib. From there to Malwa, then to East India, then to Dhaka, Assam, Dubri, and return to Punjab. Now, when we are doing the major travels, we also need to understand and see the map. Now, the map has been prepared specially for my students so that it becomes easy for them to remember these uh, travels. Now, the numbers have been put and each number has been given a name so that whenever you are reading the detail of that area, you have to come back to the map just to see where, from where he moved. Like uh, if we move on to the first point, uh, he's in the Maja area, that is Tarantaran, Khadur Sahib, Goindwal Sahib. From here, he moved on to Amritsar. And from there, he moved on to Anandpur Sahib. And from Anandpur Sahib, he again came back to the Malwa areas of Punjab. And from there, he moved to Kethal and Kurukshetra. From there to Agra, then to Allahabad, then to Patna Sahib, then to Dhaka, then to your Chittagong, then to Dubri, and then back to Punjab. And it was at Dhaka, if you can just see, this is point number nine, where he received the news of the birth of his child, Gobind Rai. Now, we will take into account every area that I have mentioned. Now, first is Amritsar. After Baba Bakala, he moved towards Tarantaran, Khadur Sahib and Goindwal Sahib, and then proceeded to Amritsar for the darshan of Harmandir Sahib. Though the head Granthi did not allow Guru to enter the doors of Harbandar Sahib, because Guru did not want any confrontation, he thought it better to return. But keeping in view the request of his devotees, he stayed at village Valla. Later, he reached Baba Bakala, but here also because of the opposition of Sodhi people, he had to move to Kiratpur Sahib. Here again in Kiratpur Sahib, Dhirmal and his companions were creating problems for Guru, so he left Kiratpur and later purchased some land from the king of Kehlur, where he laid the foundation of the town of Anandpur Sahib. But even it's this place he was mocked by his opponents, hence he started for tours to people, for people to put them on the right path of uh, Dharam, and to put them on the path of truth and righteousness. Then from Anandpur Sahib, he reached the villages like Mulowal, Sohiwal, Telwa, Joga, Bupali, Dharampur, and Talwandi. Now, this fact has not been mentioned in your uh, history books that why did he choose the area that is the Malwa area? Now, socially and economically, this area was backward and almost neglected. But the people were hardworking and poor. They were also deprived of basic amenities like fresh drinking water, milk, and even simple food. Guru Sahib toured this area about one and a half year. He also constructed wells and tanks. Along with that, he took active part in the work of public welfare. The main important halls here were Patiala, Dukh Nivaran Sahib, Samao, Bhiki, Tehla Sahib, Talbandi in Bhatinda, Gobindpur, Bhangar. Guru Sahib toured these areas for about one and a half year. Then he reached in Bhangar. Here he appointed Sikh Ramdev as the main preacher of the area. From here 
he reached Kethal and Kurukshetra. Let's go back to our map. Now, if you remember, this is what we were doing. So, we have covered Tarantaran, Khadur Sahib, Goindwal Sahib. From here, he moved on to Amritsar, then to Anandpur Sahib, then to the areas of Malwa, then to Kethal and Kurukshetra. Now, we will be taking areas post this part that we have discussed. Right? So, we've done the Malwa. Now, from here, now this is where we have come. From here, he reached Kethal and Kurukshetra. Though these are now part of Haryana, but then it was a part of Punjab itself. Now, tours of East, End, uh, East India. Guruji entered his easternmost tour via Agra. He reached Allahabad and from there, he continued his tour and then via Banaras reached Gaya. From Gaya, Guru went to Patna Sahib here, people had a belief that by bathing in the river Karamnash, all bad deeds done by person is washed away. Guru preached that only by following the right action and right character, one can lead a truthful life. Guru left his family in Patna Sahib and himself left for Dhaka. At Dhaka, as Guru reached Dhaka, a Masang named Bulaki spread news of Guru's arrival, thus number of sermon listeners increased. Teja Singh and Ganda Singh, eminent Sikh historian writes, in the west from Raj Mahal to Silhat in the east and in north from Dubri to Fateh Kachehri in south, there would hardly be a place where Sikh had not constructed Gurudwaras. Now, as discussed earlier, it was at Dhaka where Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji received the news of the birth of his son Gobind Rai. From Dhaka, Guru Ji started on a long tour of Bengal. He toured Chittagong, Lakshwadeep, Silhit and Lashkar. From here, he moved towards Dubri. Now, some uh, books have also referred about the ongoing British and Assamese war, which they believed that it was because of the Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji's effort that the war ended with treaty. However, uh, not much has been mentioned about this episode in other major sources. Now, Guruji stayed in Assam for about two years and later came to Punjab. After some time, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji called his family from Patna Sahib to Anandpur Sahib. So, Gobind Rai, was brought to Anandpur Sahib, better arrangements of his education was undertaken here. So this is about Guruji's uh, early life and his travels. But you have to again remember this, while you are doing the travels of Guruji, you have to consistently look at the map and then try to read these areas. Because when you see the map and you learn, try to understand and then learn the areas, it becomes very easy to understand the sequence. As again, I'm repeating, the first, the Maja areas, Tarantaran, Khadur Sahib, Goindwal Sahib, from there to Amritsar, then to your Anandpur Sahib, and then to the Malwa areas once again, then to Kethal and Kurukshetra, from there, via Agra, via Allahabad, he went towards the Patna Sahib. From there to Dhaka and then to Chittagong and then to Dubri and then back to Punjab. Another thing to mention here is, uh, while I was researching on the major travels of Guru Tegh Bahadur, gee, I felt that they are divergent views on his travels. Many areas have been added by various historians. But because I did not want my students to get confused, so I have done two things. One, I've linked a book which is uh, basically on the travels of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji and Guru Gobind Singh Ji. So anyone who wants to do a further study on this can refer to that uh, book. But whatever areas that I've mentioned, I have talked about the major travel areas which have been mentioned by almost all the history books and the book that you refer in your graduation years also has the same names. 
so keeping in view that it it is easier for the students to understand the topic i have only dealt with the major travels but anyone who wants to get a detailed information may refer to the link which i will be putting up at the end of this video so here i have come to the end of this question which is the early life and the travels of guru tegh bahadur ji i hope the video will be beneficial to you for any queries you can always uh, put your queries on the comment section i'll be more than happy to listen to both the positive and the negative comments thank you so much students um happy learning and all the very best